Okay, go ahead. Lord, Lord bless this day. Lord bless everybody that wanted to be here, but couldn't. Lord bless the host that is going to be bringing us the word. Lord, the Lord bless everybody that. Well, Lord, I appreciate you for waking us all up. And Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is not coming up like I want it to. I guess we're just saying a regular old song. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul. Yes, Lord. Completely my soul. Says yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul, yes, Lord, completely, yes, my soul says yes. Not my will, Lord, but that will be done. No more I, but it's you, Christ, that lives inside. Lord, I give my everything, my everything to you, you, you. And I'm yielding completely through and through. I think I'll say it one more time. Not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. No more I, but it's you, Christ, that lives inside. Lord, I give my everything, my everything to you, you, you. And I'm yielded completely through and through. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul, yes, Lord, completely, yes, my soul says yes. Amen and amen, amen. We got a lot of people missing today, but we're going to move on anyhow. Anyhow. We're going to move on anyhow. We have a good lesson tonight. It is from, we're still in 2 Samuel. We're reading uh, 2 Samuel in the ninth uh, chapter is where we're at. And, and we're just going to let God have his way tonight there's only 13 verses in here since it's only the three of us we'll read about six verses a piece i'll read the last few verses so uh we'll have brother caleb to start us out he'll read verses one through six shanana you can pick up from there it's 13 verses so we only need to read five five of these and i'll read the last three so caleb will read from one through five second samuel nine and uh, so the title of the lesson is Who Can I Bless? Anyone I Can Bless? Is there anyone I can bless? That's the question. Remember, we are on these uh, 30 days uh, to the end of the month, acts of kindness. And so uh, who can I bless? Is there anyone I can bless? And so um, we're going to talk about that today as we read. Second Samuel chapter nine. We're going it's 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 deep, y'all. So we just we just gonna have to deal with it and and move on and and we're not gonna worry about the rest of it. So.
So, uh, Caleb, you ready? You said Thank you. Samuel chapter 9, 1 through 5? Yes, sir. This is Elavi. David asked, is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. They summoned him to appear before David. And the king said to him, are you Ziba? At your service, he replied. The king asked, is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, there is still is a son of Jonathan. He is lame in both feet. Where is he, the king asked. Ziba answered, he is at the house of Mekir, the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. So King David had brought him from Lodabar from the house of Mekir, son of Amiel. Okay, Shanana. This is the King James Version. Okay. Now when Mephibosheth, Shith, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reference. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. And restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Okay, did you want me to stop at number nine or ten? You can stop there. That's fine. I'll read the last four. Okay. So, uh, verse number 10. It's, Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him and shall bring in fruit that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Melshiva that Mel Shabbat. Oh my God, I normally can say that. Thy master's son shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba and his 15 sons, Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. And then Ziba, Ziba said unto the king, according to all that the Lord, the king had commanded his servants, so shall thy servant do. As Melchizedek said, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Melchizedek and had a young son whose name was Micah, and all that dwell in the house of Ziba were servants to Melchizedek. And so Melchizedek uh, dwelt in Jerusalem. So he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame in both feet. Is there anyone I can bless? Is there anyone I can bless? Is there anyone I can bless? Now, as I begin to look in and study up, study this lesson, the first verse stuck out to me. And I want to talk just a moment about, can, is there anyone I can bless? So David was being, he was beginning to, to uh, he was, had moved into his kingship and he was sitting and he was, he was, he was at peace. You know, he wasn't having uh, very many wars and, and, and different things of that nature. So he was sitting around wondering, pondering, thanking God for all of his blessings. And as he began to thank God for his blessings, he also began to remember some of the people that had passed on before him. And so he thought about Jonathan and he thought about Saul. And so he began to ask the question, is there anybody left that I can bless? Is there anybody in the, from the house of Saul that I can show kindness to? Is there anybody left? Can I bless? Is it, can, it, can anybody I can bless? Basically, is what David was saying. And one of the things that I began to think about, one of the first things that came to my mind was not only the fact that sometimes you got to look around to see 
who can I bless? Because when God blesses you with so much, you want to be a blessing. When, when Abraham was given the promise, God told him that not only was he going to be blessed, but that he was going to be a blessing. So as Christians, as, as children of God, we think back in our minds and sometimes we are so blessed, we definitely want to be a blessing. Of course, we need to be led by God. So as I begin to think about that and I begin to ponder that, the other thing, other side of that came to my mind. And so I begin to think about, wow. I inherited my parents, I inherited their friends because David, Jonathan was his friend and brother and he loved him. But I also inherited my family's enemies as well. And so you got to keep those two things in mind when you begin to become blessed because you're going to have those haters that's not even trying to hear what you're saying. So, but you still have to be about God's business. And when God tells you to bless, you do what God says. And so as I begin to think about some of the huge family feuds uh, in the United States, I always come back to the Hatfields and the McCoys. Now they had a feud that lasted from 18, in the 1800s, 1865, all the way up to 1888 when they had a major massacre, about 12 family members were murdered in the midst of the fighting. And so it all began uh, from a, a, an accident and, 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 and then a dispute over a hog. Think about this. You done killed 12 folks over a hog. Okay, I ain't gonna talk about that part. But what I'm thinking about in the midst of that is that I inherited, not only did I inherit my mother's uh, friends and those people that look highly up on me just because of my family relationships, I also inherited some of their enemies as well, which means I also have to watch my back and on occasion. And so as I began to think about that, God was saying, well, who can you bless? Who can I bless? So I began to think about that for a moment and God began to remind me of some things that I had promised that I told him that I would do and and that whenever he called up on me that I would answer when he said he said he looked to and fro for somebody to go and I told him I'd go so I began to remind myself that I have made a promise to God and I must keep it who is there anyone I can bless is there anyone I can bless? Okay, let's move on a little bit further into, into the story. We'll talk a little bit more, then I'm going to open it up for uh, comments. And so some of the things that begin to uh, I begin to think of, I begin to look up some of these names like Zeba. You know, the name Zeba itself in the Bible means army or fight or strength. And then I begin to look at what Zeba told David. So the first thing Zeba told David was, that this man is disabled. So they begin to identify Meshitavet with by his fallacies, by his failures, by his inabilities, as well as his disabilities. But that, did, that wasn't the end of the story. Although they had identified him by his disabilities, his inabilities, and his failures, that wasn't the end of the story. Still, God said, is there anyone I can bless? So let's move on just a little bit. So in verse four, he is seeking out to be a blessing to someone. I began to look at some other names in verse four. We have Makar, we have Emilio, and then Lodabar. And so Makar actually means balance, the balance between understanding truth and strength. So it being powerful, but also having a, a, a good understanding. And the name Amel actually means the people of God. And Mel was actually one of the spies that Moses sent out to spy out the land when they were high, uh, going over, getting ready to go over into the promised land. Now Lodabar. So when God is doing things, see, sometimes we look at the Bible and we take it we look at it literally, there's a reason why the Bible is written the way it's written. So as he began to go get Mephishabeth out of a particular place, that place means something. So what does Lodabar mean? 
It is a place without order. It is a place that doesn't have leadership. It is a rebellious place. So he was pulling him out of something that was rebellious, something that didn't have leadership into the at the king's table. So sometimes in our lives, God removes us from a rebellious, rebellious situation and puts us on, on a track for order. Amen. And so we look and that's what uh, he began to do. He began to restore Melchizedek uh, into his position. Uh, and the name Mel uh, Melchizedek actually means the mouth of shame. So not only did he restore him back to the king's table, but he also removed shame out of his life. Because now, even though he was lame and couldn't move or he couldn't walk on his own, he had to be carried or uh, move from place to place. And now God has put him in a position where he's eaten at the king's table, where his shame has been removed, where he's been put back in a position of honor. Wow, look at that. Look how God does us on a regular basis. Some people will look down on us, but God will raise us up. And that's the best way to be raised up because if you raise yourself up, just like it talks about in the scriptures, you may go to a higher place and then somebody might not feel like you need to be at that place and they'll try to put you down. But when God elevates you, when God lifts you up, is there anyone I can bless? Is there anyone I can bless? So as we begin to see how Melchizedek, and then even as we begin to look at Melchizedek, uh, look at what he says about himself. So he self-identified as a dead dog. In other words, he began to look at his situation and his circumstance, and he began to feel like that's what he was. But he forgot that he was a son of the king. Even though the king is no longer in existence, he used to be in the royal palace. He used to be in a, a position of authority, in a position of, of power and authority. It's he forgot who he was. He began to identify with the dead dog. He began to look at his situation and think that that was it. Wow. Is there anyone I can bless? Is there anyone I can bless? So I'm going to open it up for any comments so far. There's a few more verses we're going to talk about, but I want you to begin to think about are there times in your life where people have looked down upon you and is there anyone I, I can bless? Am I slotted to be blessed as well as a blessing? Yes, yes. I'm going to say yes. And guess what? My, my position is not determined by what other people think of me, but it is determined by the most high God. I know I said a lot, so talk to me, y'all. Talk to me. When you say y'all, who got home here? Just me and Caleb? Yep, that's it. Just me, you, and Caleb. Anybody else um, in? Okay. So, <laughs> you know, I can't see because my phone. Oh. I'm going to have to get it on my computer. But when you say, who else can I bless? That was really sweet of David. Especially since Saul wanted to kill him. And he didn't even really want to be king. That was something that you know, and then considering that he turned around as sweet as he was, and he killed the man that finished out Saul after Saul asked him to do it, you know, and he was already half dead because he's on top of a sword or something. Mm -hmm. And we've been in this chapter for a minute. I mean, you know, of course, Saul, <laughs> David, and all this, but I know we're coming to a conclusion because as we go to Psalm, David wrote some of that from my understanding. Mm -hmm. Well, it's part of the story. What I'm learning from David, <laughs> and I know this might be a little bit off topic, is that for him to still have a heart, have killing all them people, have to run in and hide and doing this and that, he kind of remind me of my life. I ain't never killed nobody, but going through trial after trial, tribulation after tribulation, and still got a heart, and he wondering who he can bless. What you mean, who can I bless? You and I already blessed half of them because you killed all the people that was against y'all. Then Saul, who you killed them for, 
He thought you was happy to him. He turned against you. I mean, it just sounds like a bunch of betrayal and about like what Jesus went through. <laughs> you know, going through with a good heart. And before you know it, the people that you help the most are the ones that betrayed you. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's terrible because it kind of reminds me of my life. I just go around and wonder, who can I bless? Who can I bless? When I really had nothing to bless nobody with. I used to give my last, and I was barely living off anything. And even though nobody knew it, but I found to, I come to to realize that I loved giving, cause I knew how it felt not to have. But I also learned my boundaries on who I should bless, who can I bless, you know. And it goes back to these people that's up around this corner at Walmart all the time. Um, one day it's the old man, next time it's the couple with the little kid. And I'm like, God, I don't have nothing. But the little that I have, you making much. So I'm willing to help. But every time I come past this corner every two days, these same people are here. So I'm starting to realize I think it's a little bit more to that than that. And I think God wanted me to come through there more often so I could see it was just a gimmick. And that might be why a lot of times people don't pay people an attention that's standing on the corner because they have made this a routine. Yes, we are out here looking for people to bless. Yes, we want to be a blessing. That's my prayer. God bless me that I can be a blessing of it. And show sure enough, he made little much. But before I just run around, oh, who I can bless, who I can bless, even when I had nothing, I still blessing people. And that's what I love about Jesus. Um, I remember the old lady that was in the Bible, and she only had two mics, and they was talking about her. And Jesus said, wait a minute. She gave more than y'all did. Y'all had a bunch of money, silver, gold, and all. She only had two mics. Well, I kind of, that old lady kind of remind me of me. I live off $934 a month. First thing I heard somebody say, oh, you on housing. You don't have no bills. You crazy. I don't have no dependents. So that make my stuff be way higher. Your rent, life, they don't care. You know, it's just that it ain't what you got. It's the wisdom. It's the gratefulness. And how God bless me to continue to make it all work for my good. So to me, if I can help, I will. Who can I bless? You know, that's what I get a joy out of, is giving. But anyway, amen. I mean, that's all I got. And I know it's kind of off topic, but it is what it is. Brother Caleb, you got something? No, no. I'm just excited about this lesson. Who can I bless? Because it, it gives me the opportunity and the idea to, to think within my mind that, you know, it's not about me. It, see, sometimes as, as in a society that is selfish as heck, we, you know, sometimes we even get in that mindset, okay, I got to do this for, for me. I got to do this for me. And I, I got to do that for me. But God is saying, I want some of us to get outside of that mindset. That's the reason why he has tasked us to the end of the month to do random acts of kindness, whatever God leads you to do, whether that's a smile, whether that's a a, a, a piece of bacon, whatever it is, as unto God, because God wants you to understand. He He specifically told me. He said, "I want you to see or feel what it is when my children ask and I bless them. How it makes me feel. How proud I am to be able to be a blessing to you." Now, sometimes I gotta be the father, the one that tells you, "No." I mean, as well, but it's just just a reminder, you know, who can I bless? And also this lesson also teaches us some other things that no matter what your situation or circumstance is, or even what you think of yourself, you got to see God the way God, you got to see through God's eyes what he sees in you. And that's how he uh, will bless you according to the way he sees you. We noticed that even with uh, Mel, uh, Phil Chavette, he uh, also 
He also had a son. So he wasn't all the way out. He had a son. So that meant he was still prosperous. He still had something else to give. You know, even though he he was he thought he was down and out, he still was able to be a blessing to somebody. He went from, you know, uh, the disability to the king's table. Wow. You know what I'm saying? From from a uh, lack into plenty. You know what I'm saying? He 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 went from un uncertainty or or no leadership to being uh, amongst leaders. I mean, just God can just change your life around just that fast. All we have to do is be available and willing to listen and to hear what God is saying to us. Is there anyone I can bless? Is there anything that I can do as unto the Lord? And sometimes when you do stuff for people, sometimes they don't appreciate it. And you have to remind yourself, I'm not doing it just for you. I'm doing it because of God. God laid it up on my heart to do. And I'm blessing you because of God. First of all, he gave it to me. Second of all, he told me to bless you with it. Abundance, out of abundance. You know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. God gives us the opportunity to be able to lighten someone else's load. If we can. And whenever we bless, whenever, whenever you are able to, God seems to just like pour it all back out to you. Not that we should do it for that reason, but he like loads you up with, uh, wow, you be like, you done gave 10 and 100 or 1,000 comes in. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Just He just continues to overflow you because he can trust you. He blessed you because he can trust you to be able to do what he's asking you to do. Is there anybody? Is there anyone I can bless? Is there anyone I can bless? Any additional comments? Because guess what? That was the whole lesson. I know it was short and sweet, but it had a lot of pack. It was impactful. At least it was to me when I was studying. I was like, wow, wow, wow. So any additional comments? Go ahead. I get excited when I go into a place and like yesterday I went in Lowe's because I want an ivory. I want something growing in here. Oxygen. I know sky's here, but you know, some that I can see. So anyway, I went in there and you won't believe when I first went in, it was a young girl as I went through the back. And I said, ma'am, do you know what the ivories are? She done put me over there. They ain't got no ivories out of the heat. So anyway, thanks be to God, I went on in the back door to the store. And as I went on in, like it was just standing right there. It was like the Holy Spirit, because, you know, I always pray that he go before me to clear the passageway. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, he was, she was standing right there. I said, oh, my, do you know what the, the ivories are? Because I really didn't know what I was looking for. I just knew I wanted the ivory. And so um, she turned around and she said, oh, you did him up. Here go, we, here go our last one. You can either get the light green or you can get the dark green. I said, the light green looks much bigger. It's from 1988. I said, and the dark green, the one I really thought was the ivory or reminded me of one, it was 1588. I ain't saving them before. I'm going to get this big fluffy one, you know? So I got that one. And then on my way out to pay, the whole scenery, I'm going to tell you how quick God worked. And this is the reason why I know that this woman had to be sung by the Holy Spirit. She was standing there at the register. I was going to pay. And she said, have a blessed day. I said, what? That's normally my saying. Glory, hallelujah. And before you know it, now this ain't the same girl that was just sitting here that was like, I ain't going to say she was dead, but her spirit was hollow. I could feel that. This old lady, when I said she said that, I said, Glory, hallelujah. Have a blessed day to you. Then she circled her name at the end of the receipt and she said, If you can, can you just, you know, let them know that I said, you know, not that she she wanted me to tell them that she had said, Have a blessed day, but you know, give her a good report. Right. And I still have the receipt. And you would not believe how much the inside of my spirit just gleamed. She was like, you know, you glowing. 
And I'm like, hmm? Keep in mind now, we inside of, like, you know how the back part of the flowers are. Right. You got this shit. It wasn't all enough sun out yesterday, like today. It was cloudy. And she said, do you understand how much you glow? And I'm hmm. like, really? This is not the first time I heard that, but this is the first time I met a person that I didn't have to say, down there in Marshall, have blessed day. If I ain't know no better, the Holy Spirit put her there for that exact time, for that exact being. I mean, for that exact situation. For me to get excited again, that yeah. everybody is not hollow. Everybody is not here for what you can do. Some right. people do appreciate you just saying, have a blessed day. Mm -hmm. Some people, I even seen um, one occasion, and I just want to praise God for a second on that. One day, I wasn't paying attention again. And I walked in the store, and I said, hey, how you doing? And the lady, I guess she didn't hear me. And the other lady that I wasn't even talking to, don't even work in the store, she was dressed so beautifully. She said, oh, and I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm like, that's my words. How is this happening? So I'm knowing it's the Holy Spirit. So I was just telling a friend of mine that's in the nursing home. I said, sir, ain't no way in the world. Every day you get up, you can't find a way to praise him. Now I'm telling you, God is bringing all of us from the back to the front that's been in the back too long. You just talking about leadership. I seen times that I would walk in the church and they needed leadership. And it's not for me to judge. But the people that they had assigned with the titles, they shouldn't even been in there. Mm. They wasn't excited. They wasn't helpful. They weren't trying to help you get where you need to go. And I could feel the deadness in the church. And it weighed on me. And that's why I enjoyed it so much, sis. So I don't care if it's two of us. I don't care if it's three of us. Anytime that I know you're going to show up on here, I'm going to keep on hanging on. You know why? Because you is helping me. And I believe we helping each other as a family. I'm not here to be a billionaire. I never thought that. And I'm not here to make you one because that's not what you're doing this for. Mm -hmm. We're here to keep each other in carriage. Yes. And mm -hmm. this is how we do it. Wednesday, Sunday. I'm going to be here with you. It ain't never been about no money. None of that. And you know that. I've always been the one that. And you, you know, you we got that little December thing going on, and I just love it. And I remember you asking me the other day, we was on October the 8th, I'll never forget. I just mentioned it to mom. I said, Mom, she asked me, Do I like it? And I said, Sure. I do this every day anyway. Fasting, praying, giving, blessing. I do this anyway. So it's like this is something, you know, after a while, it just comes natural. Mm -hmm. now, sometimes you get a little straight off but God will bring it seems like you end up right back there where you're supposed to be so anyway I ain't gonna hold you up because I see you from the young and I probably am too because I've been up all morning praying to the dude <laughs> but anyway I just thanks be to God for you so just keep doing what you're doing and as long as God keep ripping my body I'm gonna continue to support you amen I appreciate and that that's a blessing I, I surely appreciate that God just when he speaks to you. me I'm glad I'll be glad. I'll be, uh, and I'll be learning so much. I'm not only the one giving out, I get some stuff as well. Mr. Caleb, you have anything additional for us? Great lesson. Awesome, 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 awesome. We're going to have Shanetta pray us out, and then Caleb got a question for us. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for being the wonderful God that you always been. I want to thank you for blessing sister-in-law, Kayla, and me, for us to continue to be a blessing to others, even when sometimes we don't feel like even saying a kind word. But God, every day is a wonderful day, as long as we're above this earth. God, I pray you continue to work through us, that people can see your light, not ours, and for us not to get any credit for what you're doing in our lives. And God, I pray you continue to use me as a vessel, and I go, and Lord, I want to pray for the ones that haven't showed up in a while. Lord, I pray that you will lay on their heart that we're missing them. And even if they show up or not, we're still going to praise you and continue to pray for them. Lord, I just want to thank you, and I pray that you go before us the rest of the week until we meet back up on Sunday. And God, I just want to take out the time to tell you thank you. 
And even if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't thank you enough for everything you already done. And in your son's name, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Caleb, you got a question for us? I have a question for you. Oh, what's the question? Are you determined to grow? May God bless you and keep you is my prayer. You guys have a good one. Rest easy. May the Lord continue to bless you. Continue to do those little acts of random acts of kindness. Love you guys. Love y'all too. Amen. Bye-bye. Right.